Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is David Alaska to Patagonia. Welcome again to, to my channel. Today, I'm going to answer one of my most asked questions, that is, uh, what bike should I choose for uh, my long distance bike travel? But before we get into that, I want to tell you uh, one thing about uh, notifications. So if you are subscribed to this channel and you turn on the notification to receive uh, a notification every time I publish a video. I was told by many people that they received a notification of a video in Italian or in, or in Spanish and they dismissed it because it's not relevant to them. So going forward you should know that all my blogs will be in English as they used to be and now that I'm gonna use this downtime, the lockdown, to do some tutorials for people and help them to to get into, uh, into bike traveling, I will post every tutorial and every review of gear in three languages. So in English, in Italian and in Spanish. So when, when I publish, I will publish three videos. So you might receive, I'm not sure how the YouTube algorithm works and uh, the notification system works. So anyway, just to let you know, if you receive a notification of a video in Italian or in Spanish, you should continue going to the channel because there you will find the same video in English. Like this one I'm doing it now is in English, but at the same time I will publish it in, uh, in Spanish and Italian. Let's address the elephant in the room. Have a look at this bike. This is an e-bike. Would you choose an e-bike for your long distance bike travel? Well, I'm gonna explain you something now. Pay attention and then make your own choice. This is an engine. This is a motor. And uh, we used to call bicycles with an engine, with a motor, motorbikes. So this is not an e-bike, it's an electrical motorbike so if you want to choose a motorbike for your trip then you can compare this one uh, to say a honda uh, africa twin for example and uh, so for me it's not okay to travel by bicycle around the world with an e-bike unless you're uh, 70 and above Okay, now that you know what I think about uh, motor e-bikes, um, what's the best bike to, to travel? What's the best bike for bike touring, for bike traveling, for long distance traveling? Well, the best bike is the bike you already have. Um, either you have a mountain bike, you have a road bike, you have a gravel bike, whatever you have, try to use the bike you have because with the money that you're gonna save um, buying a new bike, you will be able to be on the road uh, for three months, six months, one year longer than uh, your saving would have allowed. So think about it, uh, you're not, uh, it, it's, it's not about the bike itself, it's about the journey that you're gonna do. So whatever saves you money and allow you to be on the road longer, it will give you a richer experience of traveling, whatever style you want. And uh, nowadays, um, there are different combination of, um, of ways that you can use to carry your gear. So before we used to, we used to rely on, uh, on, on racks and, uh, and, and panniers, panniers. And, uh, but nowadays we have uh, bikepacking options and uh, the, the, there are systems that they've been developed to basically allow anyone to travel and carry gear in different shapes or forms or sizes. So even if you have a carbon frame road bike, that shouldn't stop you from traveling because you will find that on the market there are some very clever solution that will allow you to carry loads of gear. And especially if you're not doing like a very, very long uh, tour, you don't need like most of the, the spare stuff that I carry, for example. I carry loads of spares, as you saw in, uh, in uh, my last video, because I, I can be one year in a place where I cannot, I cannot source any of those spares. 
I carry my laptop because I need to edit videos, I need to edit photos, I, I want to have watch some videos when I'm, uh, or I want to write and I want to be comfortable when I have a, a little downtime in, uh, when I find a host and I stay like a week in a place or a month. Um, so, first of all, the best bike is the bike you already have at home. If you don't have a bike and you need to really purchase a new bike, then what bike should you choose? Well, until a few years ago, it was, uh, the choice was, was very limited. And I'm talking about five, six, seven years ago. Uh, it, it was either like a, a bike, a classic bike touring bike, like the ones I had in, uh, for my journey to the Americas. Was, uh, mine was a Sir Lady Tracker, but there are very similar models. So that was like um, a classic bike touring bike. It's more like um, a road bike that has some tendency uh, acquired from mountain bike but essentially it's still a road bike um, it usually comes uh, with loads of uh, brazons where you can attach um, a front rack and a back rack and uh, and that's how people used to travel uh, to do bike tra uh, bike traveling and bike touring so for two panniers at the at the back and two panniers at the front, maybe a rack bag in, on top and uh, and a bag on on the on the handlebar, and that was it. So this was uh, one choice. The other choice was uh, just a mountain bike, a cross a cross country mountain bike, and that obviously had uh, some limitations because uh, it didn't have loads of uh, brazons to to fit the the front rack, uh, the back, the, the racks in general and sometimes due to a suspension fork uh, you couldn't really attach um, the, the, you couldn't really fit the, the front racks uh, properly and that was like five, six, seven, uh, eight years ago but now there's so much choice there are, uh, there are um, Gravel bikes that are more like a hybrid between uh, a road bike and a mountain bike. Um, there are uh, plus size bikes like mine with very thick, uh, um, with very thick uh, uh, tires. And uh, there are also bikes that are uh, essentially mountain bikes um, with, a, with a road bike style, let's say. And, uh, and, a, and a classic example is the Salsa Fargo. And um, so th th there's many choice. Which one should you buy? Well, and this is uh, given my, the fact that I have a, an experience of crossing the Americas with a, with a classic touring bike. And then I changed uh, a little the setup when I was in, when I was in Chile, moving towards uh, a bike packing setup. And then uh, when I went to Africa, I had to, s to sell my Surly Disc Tracker because I had no money to pay for flight tickets to Cape Town. And luckily the shop in Italy where I bought the, the first bike, they said, okay, if you have no money, we will give you a new bike for free. And they gave me a choice of two bikes and uh, I choose this one. And uh, kudos to this shop, it's by Cafe, if you want to check them out. And it's called uh, bikecafe.org, uh, the website. But anyway, this is uh, my choice. Uh, anyway, my experience uh, taught me that uh, as much as I liked a uh, road bike because I, was, uh, I had a, a road racing background uh, growing up, I realized during my trip in the Americas that uh, highway are boring, uh, paved roads, become boring, that there is lots of traffic. Um, you, you're, you're always with the stress of the traffic, the cars, the trucks, uh, someone is not nice when they overtake you. It, it, it brings stress to, to the trip. But when you are on dirt roads, when you are on trails, uh, you're really in touch with the nature and uh, it really fills your soul. And uh, I have to thank my, my Canadian friend, uh, uh, Jared at Players Go Places on uh, on Instagram because he 
he had this metamorphosis where he also started in Canada uh, with a with a bike touring setup and ended up in in Patagonia with a with a extreme bike packing setup, um, very minimalist, very lightweight. And I have to thank him because I was going on uh, on on this adventure with him, and I was really struggling and suffering with with uh, with my setup. So when I went to Africa uh, and I and I picked up, I chose this bike because this this bike gave me the the chance to really enjoy uh, being on a trail, being on a dirt roads, double track, single track, uh, sandy roads, and. Uh, and it gives me the chance to to have a basically a bike packing setup, semi bike packing because I have the the front two front panniers as you saw in the video last uh, last week. But from my experience, the wider the tire you can fit in your bike, the easier the journey. And that's because in a tire this big, there is loads of air, and this air is a suspension. It's like a it's like a pillow. And so if you have two of those, it's like to having two like a full suspension bike. It's gonna be very gentle on your back. It's gonna be a very relaxed uh, style of riding. These tires they can they can be ridden on at a very low pressure. Sometimes you can use 15 psi, sometimes I go as low as 10 psi even lower if it's on uh, if it's on a sand, uh, sand sandy tracks and uh, and also you can have the advantage you can fit uh, you can use the tubeless system obviously so you don't have to worry about punctures and um, in comparison when i had the the surly d tracker and i was using the schwalbe marathon tour plus plus tour or the uh, schwalbe marathon plus MTB, I, those are tires that you have to you have to ride on at very high pressure, otherwise they're not performing well. So I was just pumping them up between 50 and 60 psi. So imagine the difference between 15 and 60. Your back is gonna hurt as soon as you hit like a little pothole, some corrugation. As soon as there is some chattering in the bike, you feel it. You feel it in your back, in your knees. It's, it's not fun. It's not really fun. And also you cannot handle the bike very well, especially if you are on uh, loose gravel and on loose sand. So if you really have to buy a new bike, consider this. If you're planning to stay only on, on tar roads, on asphalt, then a classic touring uh, bike, it can work. I will recommend you to, to use a, a bike that has uh, disc brakes, mechanical disc brakes. But other than that, okay, that's, uh, that's a choice. If you're planning that you would like to do some trails because you saw like uh, some videos or, um, or some photographs of other bike travelers and you see them, you saw them on the Continental Divide, on the Baja Divide, on crossing these uh, epic uh, passes on the Andes or um, I don't know the Congo Nile trail that I did in uh, in Africa and some other trail um, then I would suggest you consider buy a bike that has the largest tires possible usually a plus sized uh, bike like mine plus means uh, tire size between 2.8 and 3 inches and that's a good balance and don't think that uh, these uh, white tires are very are very difficult to to ride on uh, when you are on a tar road when you run on asphalt no it's uh, counterintuitive but the wider the tire the easier the easier the rolling resistance up to a point of course because then you have to consider um, uh, aerodynamics, weight, but from a physical point of view, and uh, Schwalbe on their uh, on their uh, website they have a they have a, a really nice article that explain why a wider tire has better resistance than uh, than uh, than a narrow tire, 
and even but you can also just uh, look at the trends of um, road racing bike um, professionals even when I was uh, when I was uh, racing I think we were using uh, 17 19 uh, millimeters and now even professional you see at 24 25 26 sometimes even 28 so almost double the size that we were using uh, 20 years ago 30 years ago so don't think that this is gonna be more uh, more heavy more uh, more difficult to ride not at all i didn't really find that much of a difference between riding this bike on a, on a tar road and riding the the surrey this tracker with the schwalbe marathon uh, tires not sure where I'm gonna add this because uh, it's something that came up after I recorded the whole video but I forgot to talk about the wheel size that's another question many people ask me 26 inches 27.5 29ers 700c what to choose well let's start off what not to choose if you can avoid, avoid the 700C. It's not a good size, it's not very popular. You will struggle to find uh, that, that tires in, uh, in remote places, um, especially the wider ones. If you can avoid 700C. Then 26 was, uh, was a size that was, was popular for, for many years on mountain bike. And that was also like uh, the size that uh, bike touring bikes uh, took from the mountain bike world because it was a it's a it's a world uh, popular size, and you can easily find uh, tires that can fit those tires everywhere in the world. Nowadays, though, with globalization, and I've been experiencing in the last few years when I was in South America. When, uh, when I was in Africa, even in developing countries, even in Africa now, you can go to a, when you are in a big city and you go to, to the supermarket, to a shopping center, to the mall, you will see they have like 29ers, cheap Chinese bikes uh, for sale. So what that does that mean? It means that if you, have, you use a 29er, you should be able to find uh, replacements uh, pretty much everywhere. Now, when it comes to 27.5 plus, like mine, uh, the advantage is, well, the disadvantage is that if you, for some reason, you fuck up your bike, your wheel, you're unlikely to find, uh, to find uh, spare parts, to find rims. I fucked them up in, uh, in, uh, in Zambia, I should know. Uh, in the whole continent of in the whole african continent basically they were available only in uh, in south africa so and even then there was only two similar rims available from wtb in the whole country so that's that to consider but the advantage of this size is that if i wanted I could have replaced this wheel with uh, normal 29ers. So normally on a, on a 27.5 plus uh, bike, you can fit also 29ers wheels. Uh, because if you see these tires, it's, it's pretty big. And if you extend the rim and fit a 29er rim, the basically the wheel size is the same. It's just that this has more air. In, uh, in the tire, but the, the, the external size is the same. So you can add, switch the two sizes. So this could be a, could be a good size you could consider because uh, you always have the, you, you have two options. Um, anyway, this is about sizes. Don't go with the 700C and then either 26, 27.5, plus or uh, 29 are all good basically another question is Davide what do I do do I I have panniers or should I go by packing just go with the flow just do whatever it works for you if you already have panniers just, there's no point to to spend money to to switch to a bike packing setup unless you have some 
strong enough reason that will that will make you uh, go towards the decision consciously because you know that uh, uh, you want to have less weight because uh, you know that uh, on a trail uh, the it's better to to pack uh, vertically than horizontally because when you are on dirt roads maybe the the rattling of the panniers it's uh, it's too much uh, there are many reasons to switch from from one system or the other but if if you have the panniers and they works for you don't spend money for bikepacking just continue with what you have and uh, if if you don't really know because you're a, you're a novice and uh, and you, you want to bike travel, but you don't know, then I would suggest to mix and match. For example, something like me, where you have two panniers and uh, some other bikepacking uh, um, bags. I would suggest you to start with a, with a frame bag. And if you fit the panniers in front, maybe you can have an harness with a, with a big dry bag in the front. Or if you put the panniers in the front, you can have a, a saddle bag in the back. So, uh, bikepacking is not about this radical thing. It's not like black and white. Uh, it's not like you have to be a bike tourist and or you have to be a a, back, uh, a bike packer. You can mix things. It's uh, <laughs> it's not a religion. It's not political. You can do as you please. So don't worry. Mix and match and you will be fine and you will have fun. I think this video is a bit too long as, uh, as usual, but I, I hope you, you got some, uh, some information out of it. This is my two cents, my, my experience, as uh, many people reach out to me and ask me this question uh, over and over again, and it's very difficult to always give a lengthy explanation to, to everybody. I decided that uh, a video on my channel would help many more people. Again, this is my experience. I did 35,000 kilometers through the Americas with a bike touring setup, even though I switched at the, at the, at the very end to more sewer bike packing setup. And then I, now I did 24,000 kilometers. I crossed Africa, I crossed uh, uh, Turkey, the Balkans, and, and I got to Italy with, um, with a more bike touring setup. A different style of bike plus size and uh, continuing I will uh, resuming when it's possible when the when the lockdown will be over when the borders will be will open again I will continue with the with the same bike and uh, and uh, also I will uh, I will probably uh, downsize a little bit my gear and uh, and get more into a, into a bike packing setup, probably uh, switching from bigger panniers to, to smaller panniers. And um, but yeah, stay tuned. This video was not sponsored by any company. Um, but if there is an, any bike company that would like to sponsor this video, <laughs> please do reach out and uh, yeah, I'll be pleased uh, to work with, uh, with, uh, with any bike company that has uh, uh, a bike, uh, a plus size bike to offer. Uh, just kidding. Uh, thank you very much for following me. Like the video if you if you got any value. It, it helps the channel. It helps. Uh, it's helped me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, hit the notification bell so every time your uh, I publish new videos. Um, you will receive a notification going forward. I think I will uh, start to publish videos twice a week on Sunday and maybe on Thursday. So just hit the notification bell and you will receive the notification when, uh, when the videos are published. And uh, thank you very much. And uh, hopefully I'll see you on the road, guys. Ciao.